Hi everyone, welcome to Mimosa, Mimosa Talks. Talks. Hi everyone, welcome to our podcast. My name is Sammy. My name is Lola. I'm Erica. Okay guys, so our episode today is going to be about toxic traits, deal breakers, and maybe red flags to look for within a relationship. Uh, we believe that this is important because relationships matter and many of us will find ourselves in relationships. However, once you do get deep into a relationship, it's hard to leave because you do love that person a lot. So we do want to put out some information just so that the general public can be aware of what to look for potential red flags in a relationship. So let's start from the beginning. What are toxic traits? Toxic traits are behaviors that we shouldn't ignore or think that they will mature over time. They might need professional help. They might persist over time, no matter what situation we're experiencing. We need to find the best mates for ourselves. And from the article from the psychologist, Dr. Tunison, relationship deal breakers traits people avoid in potential mates. They talk about the fact that deal breakers are there for a reason because it is actually costlier for us to be in a bad relationship. It's better to not get into a relationship. We all know the saying, right? It's better to be alone than with the wrong person. It actually is. It's actually proven that it is really important. Um, what's interesting is because of that, we actually tend to look at negative traits more than we look at positive traits when we meet someone. Now, those negative traits are not necessarily toxic to everyone, right? But of course, they involve also toxic traits, which we'll talk about today. Now, deal breakers, again, this article specifically talks about that and uh, can have toxic, but just also negative. I mean, a deal breaker for me might not be one for you, but example of deal breakers are anger issues or abusive, alcohol, drug problem, poor hygiene, smells bad. That's a pretty big one in my mm -hmm. opinion. Um, that, and those are for long term. What's interesting is for short terms, they can be a little bit different. Like, is bad in bed, unattractive? Apparently, that's not that bad for a long term, but for a short term it is. Yeah, so what we're going to talk about today obviously is more toxic. It's the one that you really need to look out for, and some of them are really not obvious, and we'll talk about that. So deal breaker ladies, do you have any that are like absolute no's when you're looking for a partner? My deal breakers is when my partner doesn't want to communicate, or they are very self-centered and they think they're always right. Discussions is a hard thing to improve. Everybody is like so hit up, so angry that the emotions come out and you're not able to not even communicate, think, everything's hard. So I feel like learning how to communicate and be willing to improve in a discussion is priority for me. Yeah, I feel like similarly to you, uh, when you're in a relationship, it's really hard to grasp and understand your own feelings, let alone grasp and understand someone else's feelings. Um, I, My deal breaker is when my partner just doesn't let me in. I find that so frustrating to not know who I'm sleeping with or who I'm laying next to. I like to know the inner workings of someone's mind mm -hmm. and to not know what they're thinking, mm -hmm. or even like some level of responsiveness, I feel like that can be very frustrating because you feel like you're standing outside and someone won't let you in. Mm -hmm. And I've personally been the one to try to have people speak to me and I try to have them talk to me. It's almost like pulling teeth where it's so frustrating, but I definitely need someone who knows how they're feeling or if they don't know how they're feeling, at least be able to communicate what they think they're feeling. I'm older, obviously, so I have different, I've, I've gone through different deal breakers. Now my deal breaker is a lack of emotional intelligence, which involves self-awareness, uh, know how to communicate, and that is the main one. And before that, in other relationships, I wouldn't even think about that, <laughs> like, you know. You look at somebody, they're hot, they're charming, but we'll talk about that later. Also, attachment styles will also help because I had issues that I had to work through in my attachment style and that does change what deal breakers you have. Yeah, attachment styles are really big. Um, there was a study done by a professor of communication. His name was Good Boy and the study was done in 2011. The title was Attachment and the Use of Negative Relational Maintenance Behaviors in Romantic Relationships. They looked at different attachment types. They were secure, preoccupied, fearful, avoidant, and dismissive. What they did with these attachment types was they wanted to see how 
different attachment types responded to different negative and positive relational maintenance. So in other words, in plain English, they wanted to see what type of attachment types did better when trying to resolve conflict. So they looked at jealousy, avoidance, spying, infidelity, destructive conflict types, and allowing the other to control you. But what they found was that all of these were related more to dismissive and preoccupied attachments. Yeah, it has to be difficult for individuals with an avoidant dismissive attachment style because this doesn't allow a partner to be able to get close and learn to connect with their significant other. And the thing is that we all have to put in the work. All individuals require different needs and wants. Let's learn to communicate. We have to learn to improve our relationship. And if someone is thinking, that sounds like me, it's okay. Let's recognize it and research, look for solutions, and work on ourselves. Also in the article by Overall and Researchers, published in 2015, titled Attachment, Insecurity, Biases, Perceptions of Romantic Partners, Negative Emotions, and Hostile Relationship Behavior, they tend to perceive their partner's emotions as more extreme than those with less avoidant tendencies. They tend to be or demonstrate worse reactions towards their partner's emotions or over-exaggerate them. I'm gonna talk about the big one, the big toxic trait that, it's kind of a buzzword now, narcissism, but it is a reality. And I am going to cite or use the article by uh, the psychologist uh, Worst. It's called Narcissism and Romantic Relationships, the Differential Impact of Narcissistic Admiration and Rivalry. Now, I'm sure a lot of you probably would say, I've been in a relationship with the narcissist. I know I have a lot of friends who have. Usually they come off as super charming, really, really appealing. They're too good to be true. They do everything you've ever dreamt of. And you have really, you can have quite a long run. I mean, personally, it was two years of really amazingness. And then you may have a problem because all the relationships do, and you say something negative and you realize that the person in front of you is going to do everything to not take any responsibility or communicate. Narcissists are manipulative, they are uh, mean. So narcissism is one of the main toxic traits we hear about in relationships. It's become quite the buzzword, but it is actually a thing. Now I can talk about my own experience, however, again, I'm not I can't say that that person was diagnosed, but in general, uh, narcissism is, everything's perfect at the beginning when you're with that person. And in fact, what the research shows is it's great in short-term relationship. They get all, if it's a man, they get all the ladies. If it's a woman, they get all the men, uh, because they know exactly, they're like hunters. They know exactly what to do, what to say, and how to play people. They are highly intelligent, let's not be mistaken, and it is quite scary. <laughs> but then when the other shoe drops, it really, really uh, drops. They usually are good at manipulating. They will uh, give you the silent treatment. They show low levels of commitment and investment, and they also are more likely to be violent. So ladies, or men, if you have a new relationship and it seems really, really perfect, I would say the best way to see it is to actually talk about anything that could be a problem in the relationship or any problem and actually confront it. At the beginning of relationship, we don't do that. We kind of put everything under a rug. And if I'm being honest, I could have seen it. It was there. Every time there was a smudge of conflict, there was the silent treatment, disappearance and everything. And that kept going after even we moved in. So just look out for these things and maybe test it so you don't get too far in before the negative starts. And it's important also to communicate and notice those things. If you notice that your partner is already showing those little flags, then tell him, hey, what happened there? Why did you do that? I don't like that you don't let me be. You don't give me my freedom. You seem like you don't think about me. You seem self-centered. Am I wrong? So communicate all these little things so they can be fixed. Now, if they don't improve, then you make a decision. 
I was gonna say also what's interesting is the signs were all there. So there's relationships are difficult to say all the layers, right? I ignore the signs, why? Because of my own attachment styles and my own issues. And so when the relationship ended, I did the best thing I could ever have done and I recommend it. I'm 45, I only did it then. Go to therapy. Self-awareness, self-knowledge is great and go through all the motions and and then you are able to really be your better self and live your better life, really. One thing that I wanted to add was you mentioned about in the beginning of a relationship with a narcissist, it seems really perfect and ideal and lovely. And that sounds amazing. However, I think that if you're in a relationship and there are no problems, there might be something seriously wrong because relationships are not about there not being a problem. Um, I've personally always felt that I don't like everything about myself, so it's impossible to like everything about someone else. I think conflict is natural. I think it's healthy. I think it's just how you deal with that conflict. Again, because of my own issues, I hated conflict. So there was, I mean, I won't even go into details because they're so extreme that it's incredible that I stayed, but because when it was good, and I always said that, because like you talk to friends, right? When you go through stuff to try to measure how people are really gauging what you're saying so that you try to make sense of whatever insanity you're going through. And I, I would do that, but I remember saying every time, but when it's good, it's so good. But I can tell you now, I have a much better, healthier relationship. And it is so good when we, we don't fight, when we talk and when we like discuss and we have conflict. It's amazing because you get to another level of love and understanding and it's a really opening up to the other person. So absolutely, conflict is so important. I just, you know, don't try to avoid it. I did that for 40 years. Also, the level of dependency you have with your partner, you need to watch out how much importance you're giving to your partner. You need to put everything in a balance, make sure all your relationships in your life are equally important. Relationships are very important. Uh, your own relationship with yourself is very important and I am a big believer that not one person can give you everything you need and to base your entire life and to ask one partner to give you everything and fulfill all your needs is going to set you up for failure ultimately. Um, you gain so much from friendships, from family, from making new friends, from acquaintances and your partner as well as yourself. I think that to place so much demands on one person will be too much pressure for them as well. I agree 100%, but I do think that the media, especially like you watch all the romantic comedies and everything, and they kind of push very toxic things in relationship, which is that, this like the dependence on the other person, the other person becomes your whole world, but that is a beautiful romantic relationship. Is like you said, you're your own person, you have, you know, your friends, your passions, your work, your family, and then they have that and you share that and you can help each other grow in those aspects. Your partner is always gonna be your best friend, sure. But I have friends that I've had for 20 years. They're still gonna be there. I'm not gonna leave them because of that. So, but I do think that the media shows a very, honestly, I wish there was a relationship class when you're like, a teenager before you get into your first relationship where it tells you what you can expect and what you should know a relationship looks like a healthy one let's talk about a very unhealthy toxic trait now psychopathy is really uncommon less than one percent of people actually are psychopaths a study was done by fourth and other researchers in 2021 the title is called Toxic Relationships, the Experiences and Effects of Psychopathy in Romantic Relationships. According to researchers, psychopathy is described as seeking instant gratification, often achieved through social deviance, lack of remorse, poor anger, control, and a lack of moral judgment. Researchers talked about psychopathy and how it is very uncommon, but how it is really negative and damaging to the people who experience people who are psychopaths. So how do you think is being in a relationship with a psychopath? I would imagine that it's similar to dating a narcissist where 
it's really captivating at first and very alluring and it seems safe and exciting but ultimately it might just be really damaging and like a roller coaster people who are abused by intimate partners versus strangers are more at risk to develop ptsd and have longer lasting mental health problems it might be really fun, but it seems like it would be really hard to get out of it. Probably even harder than to get out of a relationship with a narcissist. We all have these characteristics, but we need to remember that whenever they go to the extreme and they are affecting us, those are red flags that we can ignore. That is so good because one of the things that you learn when you learn all these negative traits or toxic traits even is I'm sure all of us at one point has done one of them. In my unhealthy relationship, I started giving the silent treatment because it was given to me. So I was like, oh, okay. Was that the healthy thing to do? No, I had tried everything else. That's what it was. But you do have to be self-aware of what you bring into the relationship as well. Yeah, I think it can be really hard to face something that you've been doing wrong in the relationship. I've definitely done that. Recently, I told my partner that we were being very defensive in our just day-to-day -day conversations we were just casually having conversations but we were meeting each other with this level of defensiveness in our tones and so I had to bring it to his attention but I wanted to do it in a way where I acknowledged that I was also participating in it and it wasn't um, it wasn't it didn't make for a pleasant conversation it's also important to define all this little things that have annoyed us like what is being defensive in your relationship what does that mean to you because what it means to you is not the same for me so whenever it could be a tone it could be a word that triggers you it can be a moment because if he goes with the definition that he knows about defensiveness then he's not gonna get you you guys are not gonna get your point across yeah i recently had to talk to him about responsiveness and what responsiveness means to me he, for a long time, would meet me during conflict with silence. And for me, it was really challenging because I felt like I was the only one there fighting for our relationship. So I had to break down what I felt responsiveness was. I think ultimately you have to teach someone how to love you. And so that's what I did. I had to tell him what I thought responsiveness was, how I would like to see it in our relationship. And of course, I tried to do it in a way that wasn't like, do this do that, act in this way. It was more of like, this is what responsiveness is to me and this is what I kind of look for during our conflicts. And when you're not able to meet me, at least some level of, hey, can I have five minutes, maybe 20 minutes, I need to gather my thoughts and then I can come back and give you more. I think what you were saying, Sammy, is super important because it also is part of the one thing that for me was a huge opener, and we're going to talk about that in other episodes as well, but it's the fact that in life in general, you can only take responsibility for your feelings. And I think one of the most dangerous traits that people have in relationship that is very destructive is when you start thinking you know what the other person is doing when they're doing something that bothers you. That's when we be, we start being like mind readers and that is completely destructive. So if you can communicate what you're feeling, then the other person can take it in and then they can communicate what they're hearing and then you can work together to find something in between to be happier and healthier. Yeah, and it sounds like such a beautiful way to navigate a relationship in conflict is to just kind of say something and then ask can you repeat back what I'm saying or what you're hearing? And I know it sounds ideal. And I also know on the other hand that when you're in conflict, it's like everything, everything you learn is just garbage. It just goes out the window and you're just like the defensiveness and the contempt and all the other traits that we work so hard to tweeze out. Um, so I do think that there is a certain level of grace and patience we have to offer ourselves and also our partner when we are not coming in the relationship as our best selves. But one question, I wanted to play a game of would you rather? I will ask both of you, maybe you can both, I'll just say it out loud, and then both of you can think of your answer and then say it. So, would you rather be the most jealous person in the relationship? Anytime your partner is out doing something without you talking to someone else, looking at their phone, staring at someone 
would you rather be that really super jealous partner or would you rather fart every time you meet someone new? Oh, fart. Fart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm already, we're already gassing the relationship, so why not? But even every time you meet someone new, like, you're just like, hi, my name's Erica. <laughs> Oh my fart. god. That. <laughs> <laughs> fart, yeah. I agree. I'd rather fart. Yeah. Yeah. What about if we're already on a toxic relationship? What can we do to improve our actual relationship or in case it's not improving, just leave that relationship? What can we do? I think that's a good one. Also, I would say journaling. I'm a huge I love journaling. Um, because you are able to remember. We have a tendency to forget. I literally put everything I do and sometimes like smiley faces or frowny faces. And so once you start seeing a pattern, that's when you, you have to start thinking, okay, there's something wrong. And then you're able to make the decision you need to make. And also important to stop playing that same role. If you already know that you're not happy in the relationship and you don't know how to improve it, then just stop doing what you're doing. Take a step back and analyze what you're doing, give yourself some time for clarity, and then you press that reset button. That's what I was going to say. Therapy. 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 I had already gone out, but therapy helped me realize how right I was. And in extreme cases, there are extreme cases, um, then do seek help. Don't stay. Especially if you already grew up in an environment that there's a lot of toxic uh, traits, and you just don't know that you, maybe you, you don't even notice that you're doing them. How can we get away from that? Therapy. 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 Therapy.